All right, guys. Today we're here at uh, Western Iowa Tech uh, Community College, our motorcycle power sports uh, program here, and we're going to uh, show you a couple different ways to remove a flywheel on a small engine. Um, the engine that we're using is a Honda GCV160 and a little outdoor power product engine. These are typically used on mowers. And right now we're going to uh, show you how to use it uh, using an impact with no strap wrenches or anything else. So uh, some of our students here today are going to go ahead and start removing some of the necessary components. And we're going to start with the uh, ignition here. We can go ahead and remove that. Okay. Use my T-handle, 10 millimeter. And just to make sure they're both broke free before I start taking completely off. Now, just for purposes of the video here, we've went ahead and removed some of the components like the fan shroud, the fuel tank, and just taking some of that out of the way. We're going to add some more videos throughout the rest of this uh, series here and uh, show you guys how to do this one. So he's going to make sure and support that ignition coil with his hand right now so that doesn't fall down onto something. And in a future video, you also see how we'll tell you how to set the air gap on that specification you need to do. The ignition wires have already been unplugged just to ease this. Now, one of the things that we're going to do as we get ready to remove the flywheel, he's going to start to set his impact up. Go ahead and grab that. This particular one is a 19 millimeter. Now, per the service manual, one of the things they're going to do, will you guys hold up the strap wrench? They're going to have you wrap the strap wrench around the flywheel and they're going to uh, have you use hand tools so that you can remove that. So we're going to show that in a little bit here, but I just want to talk about the different tools that are going to be required. We're going to remove the nut simply by leaving the spark plug in place. You can see here that we have not removed it yet. And that's going to create some compression that's going to slow that flywheel down a little bit. He's simply going to go ahead and put his impact on. This is standard thread. Go ahead and remove that center nut. Nope, you don't need to on that one. You can just go ahead and use your impact, tap, there you go. Okay. Now that was, that was torqued on there fairly tight, not necessarily to the 55 foot-pounds, but you're seeing the example here. The reason we don't want to have any hands or rags or anything in place right now, our whole big fear right now is on these studs. If we uh, have something jam in between there, let's say we're holding this with a rag. Can you go ahead and hold that up there so I can tape here? If we hold that rag up in there and it wedges around there, grabs your finger or something else, it's going to be a bad day. So we could go ahead and just simply uh, keep whirling on that and without the rag in place. As we're using the impact, the worst case thing that's going to happen is the motor is simply just going to turn over. There's nothing that can be physically damaged or harmed. You can see here the little wood blocks. You want to lift that motor up quick? You can see the wood blocks we made that are appropriately sized so the crankshaft is not hitting the bench. We have a, a space under there, um, and they work well for us. Okay, all right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the flywheel. We're going to grab the puller, get the nut out of place. Sometimes, can you want to hold that nut up? Yeah. Sometimes, and it's not necessary on this one here, flip the nut around. Sometimes we'll reinstall the nut with that flat flange facing up. To base it and have it just flush with the threads of the crankshaft right here and what will happen is we're going to take our puller and we're going to push down we're going to push down on this crankshaft in this uh, tapered hole right here by having the nut in place we're not going to use it this time but by having that in place it helps spread that load out to prevent the crankshaft from mushrooming. We just don't need it. These are brand new engines that come apart, put together, come apart, put together. But I want to make a note for YouTube users that that is a good idea to uh, use, and we do it on a lot of other stuff. So one thing about the Honda engine here is, if you guys can rotate this in place, right there is a good place for me. Let's see if I can get this to focus. You can actually see here how Honda has actually located the two places on either side of the flywheel to install the puller. Uh, one thing that's kind of surprising to us is it is right by the magnets here. So knowing that the puller is going to be real close proximity to these magnets, we want to use some real caution. Now what's also funny, in one of the other training modules that we were watching from Honda, they had a big uh, technician tip or warning to never install a puller anywhere by the magnet. You're going to see here this pops off pretty easy. We need to just use some caution, but um, just kind of interesting comparing one engine to another. Go ahead and grab your puller and start to set that up. So 
Ross here is talking about the, the polar itself. Ross, go ahead and, and uh, talk about what you learned in class there. Um, we'll put some lube usually down here on the tip and on the threads that are going to be used. It'll just make things a lot easier. It won't stick and wreck the threads and uh, mush them as easy. Okay. Parts come apart a little bit easier for us. Now, as he got, kind of goes to set this up, I'm going to go ahead and take that socket off. Now, sometimes once polars are in place and, and they're uh, being difficult to actually pop the polar or whatever you're trying to pop off, it's kind of common practice to take a hammer and beat on the end of this polar, which mushrooms the edge of this. As we pulled this polar out of the toolbox, we had to actually, um, we had to actually take and file the tip of that polar off so that we could get our socket back on. Okay, so you kind of just supporting it in place. When you got multiple hands like this, it's nice to go ahead and just get some help with that. Okay, so that's just loosely in place. Yeah. Now, a couple different ways we can do this. We're going to make sure that we're going to stay as far away from these dowel pins as possible. We don't want to break one of those off. So in this particular one, we're just going to take and have a couple guys hold each side. Or Danny, actually, can you? We can slide the engine your way and get you comfortable. Well, let's turn that engine even a little bit more towards you so that you're nice and comfortable. You can use the impact. If we use the strap wrench, we're going to show the other way, like I said here in a minute, where we're going to use the hand tools. But for right now, we're going to show how easy this is. Now, Danny's whole goal is he's just giving this just a little bit of support that when Ross just basically taps it with the impact, he's going to get that to pop off. If he were to take that impact and just hold it wide open, we'd end up potentially having a problem. Is that the three-quarter socket? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's it. We're done. It's that simple. Obviously, the guys, we talked about these being new engines, and these aren't as bad. But uh, regardless, it's the same technique. Now, let's say that that polar or that flywheel was not wanting to pull. We would take it sometimes, just leave it in place and let it sit. Go do something else. You can take a hammer, not ideal, and whack the polar, but never, ever, ever hit the flywheel. Right, guys? Right, right. Okay. All right. We're going to stop this. We'll come back and make another video here in a second of how to use it with a strap wrench. All right. Thanks for helping out today, guys.